Namaste. Well, it's been quite an interesting week. <laughs> um, first of all, I've uncovered a amazing treasure trove of Vedic knowledge. And the key to it all is Shankaracharya. Shankara, simply the best author, the best commentator, the best of all the saints, uh, the highest message, the most consistent presentation, the deepest knowledge of the sutras and so forth. And after finding this out, of course, I downloaded a bunch of his books and promptly found myself lost in the jungle of the Upanishads. <laughs> there are 108 Upanishads, and maybe 25 of them are prominent, meaning relevant to the topic of realizing Brahman. And in his works, both his commentaries and his original works, Shankaracharya makes extensive references to all of them. So to really understand what he's talking about, you have to go to the original sources and read the context to get the full meaning. So I found myself going back and forth between all these different files. It was a mess. And I said, well, I need some better software. So I spent several days researching knowledge management software. And I mean, you know, there's dozens of them out there. But to make a long story short, the one that's most appropriate to these particular materials is called Liquid Text. And I put a link to it in the video description. Um, I also put a link to a, a folder on Google Drive with a bunch of liquid text project files. And what is this all about? Okay. First, you have the Upanishads, which, like I said, about 15 to 25 of them are really important, really germane to our purpose, which is realizing Brahman. So I got all of those in electronic form. And then there's a higher level of commentaries on Bhagavad Gita and Vedanta Sutra that refer to all of these. And then there's a still higher level of Shankaracharya's original works. Aparokshanabhuti is one, but it's kind of doubtful whether that's actually his uh, work. In fact, after comparing it to the ones that are known to be by him, I kind of doubt it myself. It's still good, uh, but it's just not on the same level of quality and, and deep insightfulness that, for example, the commentary on Vedanta Sutra is. My God, <laughs> it's just amazing. And then there are two works that aren't widely known. Well, uh, one is and the other isn't. The Viveka Chudamani is a very well-known work by Shankara. And the other one that's not so well-known, but I think it's even more valuable, is the so-called Thousand Instructions, Upadesha Sahasri. See, you never heard of, of it, did you? Upadesha Sahasri is the, it takes the form of an extended dialogue between an Advaita master and a student. And, oh my God, it's so wonderful. I mean, it's, it's words fail to describe it. So anyway, I have all of these books 
in a series of liquid text projects which you can download and you can download liquid text for free there's also a pro version which is only a few bucks and i strongly advise you to get it because it has some extra features that makes using it for study very very valuable and so use these files use these uh, this software and use it to study these books and then that's not all folks i'm moving back to india to jagannath puri in odisha actually a week from now a week from today and i have already set up a bunch of high level meetings with the Shankaracharya, the present Shankaracharya of Puri, and some of his prominent disciples about how to present this knowledge to the Western world so that people could actually get it and benefit from it. And, you know, I pretty much know already what he's going to say. <laughs> and it's the same thing that I would say, which is you have to come here you have to be in the presence of the knowers of Brahman. You have to become a disciple, live the holy life, study not only the books, but the way of life of the enlightened sage. And then if you want to go back and teach people, that's your business. But as far as learning, as far as getting realization, the old way is really the only way. Upanishad, actually, I found now it has three meanings. It means come close and sit down. That's the, the obvious meaning. But it also refers to the secret or esoteric meaning of the Upanishads, which is Brahman. And more than that, it means that Brahman is the foundation of everything. And as I've talked about a little bit in some of the comments on these later videos, uh, the reason why Shankara's disciplic lineage, his parampara, his guru lineage, has remained solid and is still the most important lineage in India after all these years, nearly 2,000 years now, is the fact that he bases everything solidly on the Vedic scriptures. And we see other lineages, even from realized beings like Ramana Maharshi, Bhagavan Nomi, Osho, and so many others, J. Krishnamurti, and so on and so on, who don't really teach the scriptures. And we see that their lines completely degenerate after only a few generations. Maybe even one generation. So the secret of a long living teaching is to base everything solidly on the Vedas and Upanishads. Why? Because the Vedas and Upanishads are of divine origin. They are not written by human beings. I mean, maybe they were written down by human beings, but they were received by the Rishis in ancient times by highly spiritual beings living in the forests, completely renounced, fully self-realized. They were received directly from Brahman, directly from the source. They were received by Lord Brahma in the beginning of creation. They were received by Prajapati, the first ancestor, the first human being, Nara Narayan and passed down by disciplic lineage to the present day. 
So these scriptures are not a product of human intelligence. And if you read them, you will understand why. Because they talk about things that are completely beyond human perception and understanding. However, when you read Shankaracharya's commentary on them, you can tell he totally gets it. He's speaking with the same voice as the Upanishads. So I'm dropping everything else and totally focusing on Shankaracharya's teaching and creating a relationship with Shankaracharya's lineage. Now, they may or may not recognize my sannyas because Number one, I'm a foreigner. And number two, I got it from uh, an unknown sannyasi. I don't care. Whether they recognize it or not, I can still hang around <laughs> and get the benefit of their association, which is what I really want. I don't really care about the formalities, you know, the designations and all that stuff, organizational positions and whatever titles and so that doesn't mean anything to me the meaning is i want to have people who are realized very close to me very uh strong people people with real knowledge now that brings me to this channel <laughs> after 10 years of making videos watching them go off into the ether and then there's really no response, you know, no meaningful response. I'm like, why am I doing this? You know, just to entertain a bunch of dilettantes? You know, seriously, folks. There is one student who really wants to live the life and is slowly, slowly, he's arranging his life so that he can come and study in India, you know, in the original culture, in the original environment, social environment, there that these teachings came from. That's what I did. That's how I got realized. And so he's also getting ready, but nobody else has showed up. Everyone has some other interest, some other attachment, you know, some other opinion, and they want to argue about it. You know, well, I think that the Vedas aren't really written by God. You know, they're actually some guy got enlightened and then he told somebody else and then they wrote it down. No. There is no evidence to support that view. The Vedas are of superhuman origin, period. And there's thousands of quotes in the scriptures to substantiate it. If you start researching, as I have suggested, using the software that I recommend, using the projects that I have created for your benefit, for your use, you will see directly what I'm talking about. But you have to do the work. I'm tired of entertaining a bunch of people who just aren't ready to do anything. You know, I'm going to be in India. I'm going to be in a place where there's plenty of accommodations available, plenty of facility available for this kind of work. So start saving your money. You come there. Uh, by next year, I'll have a retreat center established and people can come and learn all this stuff directly from the scriptures. I'll be there to help and advise and guide, you know. But I, I, as I always have said, I'm not a guru. I'm not even really a teacher. But I'm just the guy who points the way, who shows the way, who, who hacks through the jungle and makes the trail. And then it's up to you to use it or not, you know? And if you're not going to use it, if you're not going to make some effort, take some initiative, you know, 
and really do this thing, then, you know, why are you hanging around here? You know, I would be much happier with a hundred or even 10 really highly motivated viewers than having, you know, what is it now? 3,700 uh, subscribers and only one real student? That is ridiculous. So if you really want to do this thing, if you really want to study this stuff, if you really want to get enlightened, write me at the channel email address. And if I need to tell you where to find it, means you haven't been paying attention all this time. And so, you know, I don't really want to deal with you anyway. Uh, the email address is where it always has been. Go find it, write me, and I'll give you further instructions. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.